When I was born on April the 8th, 1927, I don't think anyone could have accurately predicted my future. My family was large. I was the fifth of eight children. We lived in a small picturesque village of Stanley in Northern England. Having so many mouths to feed and separate issues to tend to, my family was never overly wealthy. When I was two years of age, my parents decided to re relocate to Canada and chose the welcoming town of High River, Alberta as our new home. I attended school in High River and enjoyed almost every minute of it. I had known the same people from the first grade until my second year of grade 12 and had become incredibly comfortable with my social circle. During high school, it was encouraged of the male students to take the Air Cadets program offered at a small nearby airport. For three nights a week, they taught students about flight navigation, instrument use, and proper flight control to prepare them for going into flight during the war. When it came time to graduate after the second year of grade 12, I passed with flying colors, but with times being as hard as they were, I had difficulty gathering enough funds to attend or receive any form of post-secondary edu education. A melancholy feeling came over me as I bid farewell to all my friends leaving for college and university. Still living in High River, I had plans to dive into a career in banking, but it didn't take long before a good friend of mine convinced me to attempt a career in journalism. My good friend had told me that a life devoted to journalism requires a large personality and great people skills and a rare form of fearlessness of people, all of which I had. I took my first step in journalism by taking a job at the High River Times, doing any chores that needed doing. By 1952, I felt the need to gain more from my life in journalism and moved to Calgary and got a job at the Calgary Herald. I stayed and worked there for five years until I met the woman who would soon be my wife. My wife Ramona, Ramona Mo, and I wed in 1956, and together we raised three children. We lived together in Calgary until city life proved to be wrong for us. We no longer wanted to raise our family in Calgary and moved to Vulcan, Alberta. <clears throat> Mo and I still live in the house we helped to build. <clears throat> I worked at the Vulcan Advocate for a man by the name of Bob Monroe until I bought the paper from him in 1980. I owned it until 1995 when I sold and retired. It is in this little town where Mo and I still live happily.